Hello, Living Grace Community Church family. It was good to worship with you on Sunday, even though we couldn't be together. Uh, I so enjoyed knowing that as we took part of the bread and of the cup in communion, that you were joining with us in your homes, all joining together, united around, remembering what Jesus Christ did on the cross when he died for our sins and then rose again on the third day so that we can, by faith, have salvation. Now, last week... I began to share some thoughts with you about how we should respond to and deal with the pressures of life. And last week I focused on three Old Testament books. We began talking about the Psalms, which is the affirmation that God has given to us to share our hearts openly and honestly with Him. In the book of Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah shared in the right in the very core of the of the book how that in the midst of the dark times he was going through, what did he hang on to? It was the faithfulness of God. And Habakkuk, who also was a contemporary of Jeremiah and was going through dark times of his own, he ended his book by talking about though everything goes bad, yet I will rejoice in God my Savior. Great testimony of faith in God. Now, to this time, I want to shift our attention to the New Testament but to a chapter that has strong, vital connections back to the Old Testament. You might be guessing where it is. It's Hebrews chapter 11. It's often called the Hall of Faith because it's filled with men and women, uh, many named, some unnamed, who by faith follow the Lord. And they are an example to us and how we should live. The chapter begins speaking about faith. Look in, listen to verses 1 and 2. Now faith is being sure of what we hoped for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. And the key verse to the entire chapter is the sixth verse. For there he says, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Why? Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Following that, uh, that beginning in verses 4 through verse 31, we have a series of examples of living by faith of specific Old Testament figures like Noah and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Joseph and Moses and his parents and others. Great examples of faith being lived out and actions coming out of it as a result of it. And that's a key thing in understanding faith. But when we come to verses 33 through 40, we come to a, a section in which uh, no one's specifically named. Now, some of the characters, we can kind of guess who they are, but it doesn't really tell us their names. And what's very interesting in this section, and it's where I want to focus our attention, is a very significant shift that just seemingly comes out of the blue. And yet, I believe it's intentional and incredibly instructive. It begins on a high note. Look at verses 33 through the middle of verse 35. Here's what we read about just incredible stories of faith. It says, And who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised? who shut the mouths of lions and quenched the fury of the flames and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Those are incredible stories. We read this and we go, wow, aren't those fantastic? But then we pick right up in the middle of verse 35 and listen to what it says through verse 38. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. And God says this about them. The world was not worthy of them. And they wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. I don't know about you, but I like those first verses a whole lot better than the second ones. Because the first ones are positive, wonderful blessings that came out of their faith. But 
not so much with the latter group. But what did the both groups have in common? Verse 39 says this, These were all commended for their faith. That's what they all had in common. Every single one of them. Now, I believe there's something very instructive in this. And the reason I say that is we often think of living by faith and that if we do it, it always results in what? Blessings. Good things come out of it. It's the you know, conquering kingdoms and administering justice and seeing the dead raised back to life. That's what we think faith always results in. But that's not true. There are times that people live by faith and the blessings don't come. In fact, sometimes bad things happen. And that's important for us to learn. Because when you and I are facing the pressures of life, when they are pressing in on us, we think, well, if I have faith, if I trust the Lord, good things will come out of this. But it's very possible that even in the midst of difficult things, uh, maybe the results are not going to be what we want. But we, by faith, have to still trust the Lord that if we love him and we're following him and we're being faithful to him and we're doing the things that he wants us to do, even if the results are not exciting and positive, we are still living by faith. Because what's important is the object of our faith, God in his faithfulness, not the results. So as you face the pressures of life, remember where your trust is. It's in not what happens to you. It's not even in what happens to you when you live out your faith. It is what happens when you trust in the Lord God and live for him. That's the way to deal with the pressures of life.